Hi there, welcome back. Now, in this lesson, we will consider together very different topics. So, for example, we will start by considering the price of a European coal when we substitute the stochastic process that represents the dynamic of the stock price, of the risky of the risky asset. For example, we will see what happens when we substitute the geometric run motion, which is the process we have been using so far, with a simpler process, the arithmetic run motion. In a sense, we are going back to the roots of financial mathematics because this type of process, the arithmetic run motion, as a model for the prices, was actually introduced by Bachelier. So this is really one of the first attempts to model prices using stochastic processes. So we will see what happens to the pricing formula of the European coal. For us, from a theoretical point of view, there will be no big difference in the way in which we obtain the, the formula. It's just another application of the Black, Scholes and Merton theorem. Other important topics that we will consider together are related to the so-called absence of arbitrage on the market. We know that the absence of arbitrage is a fundamental assumption for us. And we will see that, for example, in order not to have arbitrage on the market, we cannot have two different risk-free assets. At the same time, we will consider the so-called uh, put call parity as a necessary condition for the absence of arbitrage on the, on the market. In the second part of the class, then, we will move towards more advanced uh, securities and options. For example, we will start considering the case of a dividend paying asset as the underlying asset for our options. In 1900, Bachelier introduced a model in which the price at time t of the risky asset is equal to a value S0 plus mu times t plus sigma bt, where bt is a standard run motion under the physical measure. Now, this process is what we call an arithmetic run motion. Assume that we want to compute the value of a European coal at time zero uh, under such an hypothesis. So if the risky asset follows an arithmetic run motion. What we will assume, to simplify a little bit our computations, but also to leave an interesting exercise to you, is to take our risk-free rate R to be equal to zero. And then, for the rest, we just have to apply our Black and Scholes and Merton theorem, as we did in the standard framework of the geometric Brunner motion. Under the Cameron-Martin theorem, we know that we can introduce a new measure Q, which is equivalent to the physical measure, such that under such a measure we have a process WT that is a standard Brunner motion corresponding to a running motion with drift under the physical measure. Now, this allows us to rewrite the price process as you see on your screen. So ST is now equal to S0 plus sigma WT. The value in zero of a European call with underlying asset following the Bachelier model is the quantity C0, which is nothing more than the expectation under the measure Q of the payoff of a European call, that is to say, ST minus K plus. Now, until here, nothing changes with respect to the standard framework if we consider that we are assuming R to be equal to zero, so the risk free rate is equal to zero. Now, what we need to do is just to substitute the value for S capital T following the process defined under the risk neutral measure, and we can immediately write down everything as the integral that you see on your screen. That once again, given the standard running motion WT under the measure Q, can be written in terms of a 
density of a normally distributed random variable. So we have S0, the quantity sigma wt can be uh, substituted with sigma y square root of t, and then obviously we take into consideration the density of our standard normal, that is to say the term exponential of minus y square over 2. Now, as we did when we were considering the European core with a geometric running motion, also here we have to find the condition such that the argument of our expectation is non-negative, okay, because we are using a European code, so we have always the maximum between zero and the difference between the stock price and the strike price at maturity. So if we do that, we find out a value d that plays the same role as the quantities d2 and d1 in the previous framework. So now we have our value d that will be the threshold such that we can consider the argument of our expectation to be non-negative. So in our previous integral, we can just substitute minus infinity with d because we have that the argument of our expectation needs to be larger than d in order to be non-negative. And once we have done that, we can simply split the integral into two terms, a term related to S0 minus k and a term related to sigma square root of t. Uh, the first part can be then rewritten in terms of the survival function of a standard normal a random variable evaluated in D, and for what concerns the second integral, it can be solved explicitly. Notice that the quantity 1 minus phi of D is the survival function of a standard normal. So if you want, you can also write that as phi bar of D, or if you want to express everything just looking at the CDF of a standard normal, you can use the symmetry of the standard normal. So you can write 1 minus phi of d as phi of minus d. And in that sense, the formula looks uh, a little bit more similar to the formula that we have already considered under the basic setting of a geometric running motion. Now, one thing that I ask you to try to, to do is a nice exercise try to give a Wang transform representation of this problem. So is there a way to find the connection between the physical measure and the measure Q, that in any case will be the risk neutral measure, uh, using the Wang transform? In the lecture notes, you will also find a very, very simple exercise uh, related to the value at risk. The value at risk is a quite relevant risk measure that it's used and abused a lot in risk management. From a statistical point of view, it's nothing more than a quantile, as we know, as we have already seen when we were speaking about distortion measures. Uh, but I think it can be nice to try to compute the value at risk in this very basic setting. Okay? So you will see that obviously we have to consider what is a really actually a loss for us. We can give different definitions, but you find all the definitions and the computations in the lecture notes. Just notice if you are also following uh, quantitative risk management that the difference is for us that losses are negative and profits are positive because this is the standard in asset pricing. Conversely, in risk management, we consider losses to be positive quantities and profits to be negative losses. For the rest, it's just a very basic, I hope, exercise that I leave to you.